two-time U.S. Open nine-ball champion. Dynamite, Darren Appleton. I came from the mud. Looks good. Looks good. It is good. The most important one was winning the World Ten Ball Championship because it's everyone's dream to be world champion. Could go into the edges. Grinder, fighter, play with a lot of emotion, a lot of art. Hello, pool fans, welcome back. And today I'm going to show you how to play a record nine ball and I'm going to explain what I'm going to do. Right, so we're going to have a game of nine ball. Uh, we're going to use a new uh, break rule. Uh, that we're using for nine ball right now. So it's a quite a small break box if you imagine you're from this diamond to the one ball there The break box is like this this wide So you can figure it out for yourself if you just do this with your cue So if I just mark it with my finger This is your break box. So that's how big the break box is the new break box uh, So if you watch all the matchroom events now, this is where we're playing. It's definitely the best way of playing nine ball uh, the players have been crying out for this for a long, long time. Uh, we do use it at the International Open rules. Uh, probably why it's probably the, the players' favourite event. Uh, and they used to use it for the, the old US Open. So the key to the break is now it's a lot more difficult than it, than it is breaking from the side rail. Or, and also using the one ball on the spot. Where now I've got the nine ball on the spot with this new break rule. It makes things a lot more difficult. And now... And now nine balls a difficult game to run a lot of racks and that's the way it should be anyway it's difficult to make balls but my target ball is to try and make the one ball on the side or if you hit them really good and you're playing on brand new equipment you might get lucky and make the corner ball which is what we call the wing ball the green six into the corner uh, and yeah that's my main two target balls making any other balls is just luck or uh, yeah, just look and hoping that you might make another ball also. Uh, there's no secret to where you're going to land the cue ball or where, where, which is going to be the lowest ball after the break to get a shot. So it's a very random break, uh, which is what the pros prefer. Now you're seeing a lot more safety, a lot, a lot more thinking, and more strategy, but also you start to see all the skill level of the players. Right then, guys, so let's hit the break. So first of all, I am about half ball on the one with a lot of right hand English and try and get the cue ball to do this back into the stack. If it goes a little bit higher, no problem, then the cue ball will probably come this way. But I'm gonna try and get the cue ball come off the, come off the side rail, go back into the stack, and sometimes you get lucky and make the nine in the corner or even the side, or it might get kicked into a, di a different pocket. But my main target ball is this, is this yellow one in the side, or the six, the green six into the corner, depending on how good you hit them and the conditions of the table. But a lot of bottom right, make sure I accelerate through the cue ball and see what happened. Right, so I made the wing ball, which is a six. Didn't make the one, but that's okay. We, we, made, we made a ball on the break. I got one of my target balls. And that's a good thing with this uh, break in the box nine ball. The break is more unpredictable. You have no idea where the lowest ball is going to land. And you have no idea really where the cue ball is going to land unless you can get away with hitting the break very softly. So survey the table after the break. I do have an open table, but the first shot is tricky. I've uh, got a little angle on it, so I can't just make it and land here. Plus the two is pretty tight into the side. It does go. Uh, so I might have to make the one come over here. So now I'm thinking about the one, two, and three. Always think three shots in front plane rotation. And if you've got any problem balls, you've got to figure them out as soon as possible. Yeah, so it's a little bit tricky, this. So I'm, I'm going to have to make the ball and come over here. If I land straight for the two in the corner, okay. If I get a shot for the side pocket, that's okay also. So I'm not too worried about the free ball right now, but obviously I'm thinking about it. But my main focus right now is making this one ball because it is missable. So make sure that I get over with the cue ball as well. And put a good stroke on it. Which I did do. Struck that pretty nicely. So I can have a look at my angle now. I think I'm okay just to roll forward here and take this path. 
The other option, if I if I was a bit further up, like a little bit here with a cue ball, I'd have to go this way. So that wouldn't have been a disaster either. The purple four is laying pretty decent, so I don't have to worry. If I get straight on the free, it's not a disaster. So it's not essential to get an angle on the free ball here. But I definitely need to make sure that I get over there, put a good stroke on this shot here, just eye on the cue ball. I didn't want to use two rails on this shot, or let's, yeah, two rails, because if I hit the ball too hard, this, it would have been close to a scratch, and I didn't want to bring that into play. So here I've got a nice little angle, so I'm going to play it with a touch of right, middle to low on the cue ball, go two rails, leave the right angle on the purple four. I don't want to be getting straight, because then you're making life hard for yourself. So, of course, I'm thinking now about the five also. Always thinking three shots in front. So here, just a touch of right, just below centre, for a good stroke on it. I don't, I don't want to get greedy and get too close to the purple. I thought just leave, just make sure that I leave the angle. So here, four to five. So I'm thinking about four to five, five to seven now. So straight, it's not a disaster. Shots okay because then I can swing it round off the two. Uh, coming here is no good. So you've got to make sure that you don't get into this too much. Always look at my angle on these type of shots. So here just a touch of right. Yeah, just a touch of right. Probably got into it a little bit more than I would have liked. But I said if I land straight, it's not a disaster. Because I've got options just to leave it there. Play the seven in the corner. If I get straight, I knew that I can draw back here. And I'll have the seven in this corner. So I always don't be afraid to change your route, your plan. And because I'm straight, just off straight, I'm just going to draw it back here. So make sure you don't overdraw it. That's the key. I think that perfect, really. Got a nice angle on the seven ball as well. But again, make sure you don't land short. Anywhere here is nice. So here, just one rail, just with a touch of the left. Straight or just off straight is okay. So now I'll just pinch the pocket here, make the eight into the right hand side of the pocket and bring the cue ball here, where if I make it into the middle, I can come here. But the problem with that, you might come too far. So here, at least if I come too far, I've still got a good shot on the nine. So just pinch the pocket a little bit, a nice little soft draw, like that. You see what I mean, where if I had made that into the middle of the pocket, the cue ball would have probably come here, and then you're leaving a very tricky nine ball. So don't forget to cheat the pocket, it's very important on certain shots. So just kill the nine ball here. Yeah, don't try and smash that ball in, there's no need. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the rack, uh, got inside my head, how I think at the table. And yeah, if you get on the right side of the balls, think three shots in front, then you make the game a lot easier. Mm -hmm.